All right. We, we Ready good. to resume. We good, Ranger? Yes. All right. So what happened there is that someone noticed uh, that there were names uh, and home telephone, home numbers or home addresses and telephone numbers. We've redacted those names, right? Yes. Now, what crime is Mr. Wynn or Mr. Uh, Paul asking you to commit by tendering this PowerPoint to you? They entered the PowerPoint and gave it to us to map out how they felt our investigation that they wanted to be created should go. Okay. We have a transcript, do we not, of exactly what they said. Transcript of? Exactly what they said when they were meeting with you on August 5th when they gave you this PowerPoint. Yes. Okay. And you've reviewed that transcript, you say? Yes. And where in the transcript, what words do they use to describe to you that they desire a crime to be committed? They obviously did not say that they wanted a crime to be committed. What they wanted was an investigation. Okay. And your position, Ranger, is two private citizens coming in and asking for an investigation into whether or not search warrants were illegally created, that asking for that investigation is a crime? Following through on the investigation is a crime. What crime would it be to investigate the legality, if, if that's a crime, I'm gonna be on death row. I investigate the, the, the legality of search warrants all the time. That's what I do. What crime is it, Ranger, for them to ask you to investigate the legality of a search warrant? The only purpose. No, no sir, objection non-responsive. What crime is committed? Jack, objection, he didn't allow him to finish and so we could see whether it's responsive or not. I believe it was gonna be responsive. Objection to interrupting the witness. I'll Overruled, I sustained, but. I'll ask again. And I'll ask calm, again, take and a I'll, pause. And I'll calm down. And you can raise the mic too. And I'll, I'll calm down and raise up, okay. I'll try again, Ranger. All right. Even at my age, I get excited every now and then. What crime is committed, Ranger, by them asking you to investigate the legality of a search warrant? What crime is that? In my professional opinion, to create this investigation and follow through it would be obstruction of justice and interfering with a federal investigation. In fact, doesn't Mr. Wynn say over and over and over in the transcript, he does not want to interfere with the federal investigation? He does not want to obstruct justice? Doesn't he say that? He does. Okay. So the fact that he's saying he doesn't want that done, uh, even though he says he doesn't want that done, you think it's a crime because? His actions belie his words. Okay. Well, you are Dave Maxwell, Hall of Fame Ranger. If they would have committed that offense right there, literally on videotape, the Dave Maxwell I know would have stuffed and cuffed him right there. You would have arrested him, right? No. Okay. In fact, Ranger, what did you tell him? I told him that what I said in the beginning, that we would have the forensic people look at the metadata, and they promised to give us all the documents they had in order for us to do an examination. Let me try again, Ranger. Instead of saying, you've committed a crime, I'm going to arrest you, what you say on page 140, three, line 24, is we're going to look every which way into this, right? That is exactly right, as far as the metadata. Okay. You, uh, Mr. Penley says, quote, 
we're going to look into these allegations, right? He may have said that. Okay. Mr. Penley says, thank y'all for coming in today. We appreciate it. Thank you for the handout and, the, and for the documents. We'll look into this. Are, are those the words? Mark, Mark Penley's an experienced prosecutor, right? Yes. He was with the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Northern District of Dallas Division by my recall, 15, 18 years. He's, he's, something not, that, he's not a newbie. Something like that, yeah. Do those words, Ranger, sound like the words of, <laughs> of an 18-year experienced federal prosecutor that believes a crime has been committed? No. Thank you for the handout and for the documents. We'll look into this. Uh, what, is, what is your question about what you just said? My question is, do the words spoken by Mr. Penley suggest in any shape, form, or fashion, Ranger, that he, Mark Penley, believes that a crime has been committed in his presence by the tendering of the very documents we've just discussed? Absolutely not. Do you think Mr. P Mr. Penley's a pretty straightforward guy most of the time? I'm sure he is. Well, you worked with him, didn't you? Yes. I assume, Ranger, that if he exhibited any characteristics of deceit or deception, you would have picked up on him. Who would have picked up on the deceit? You, Hall of Famer Dave Maxwell. What I, well, how I answer that is that he and I both knew that the only thing we were going to do was look at the metadata, period. Okay. Well, since you know what he knows, did he think he'd been asked to commit a crime, Mr. Penley? Mr. Penley did not believe that a crime had been committed by these officers or the magistrate, or the U.S. Attorney's Office. My, my question probably wasn't a good one, Ranger. Did Mark Penley believe that Mr. Wynn and Mr. Uh, Paul, by asking for this investigation, did he think that was a crime by the simple asking of the legality of search warrants to be investigated was a crime? He believed as I did that if we followed through with what they were asking, it would definitely be a crime. Okay. And that's why he continued to work on this case. That's why he continued to do an investigation. That's why he told uh, Ken Paxton, I've got more work to do. There's more things I need. I need to do some more research. Does that make sense, Ranger? I didn't tell Paxton that. No, he did. Are you aware who, of that? Who did? Mark Penley. Oh, I don't know what he told him. Ranger, when is it, sir, that you first heard the name uh, Brandon Kamick? When I was on vacation in Colorado. And I think Mr. DeGaren had us, or had you in late September. Uh, late September. I, I w was traveling to... Colorado on the 26th of September, 2020. Okay. And was it, you learned of that name how? Through Mark Penley. Okay, so do you have an independent recall, Ranger, of the date of that? Like 25th, 26th, 27th, just ballpark it for me. It was on the 26th of uh, uh, September, September, 2020, when I, uh, Mark Penley told me about what was happening with Kamek. Okay. So Penley calls you, you're in uh, Colorado at the top and you got to come down and that's- Well, actually I was driving at that time, so I had him on speakerphone. Okay, but anyway, you're yeah. in Colorado, right. he's here, right? and he's upset and annoyed, whatever, because Brandon Kamek has been hired. I think at the time he had not been hired that on that particular date, he had a meeting with Ken Paxton and Ken Paxton tried to get him to sign the EAM so Cameron could be hired. Let me, sl let me slow you down. Okay. Stepping on pronouns. All right. uh, when you say 
he tried to get, who is he? You just said that. that he tried, Ken, Ken Paxton. Yes, sir. Tried to get Mark Penley to sign off on our EAM, which is uh, a protocol that various people have to sign in order to hire, spend money, that type of thing. We, we've, we've unfortunately heard a, a little too much about an EAM. <laughs> But for purposes of this exchange, Ranger, are you aware that the Attorney General has the authority to hire outside counsel himself, statutorily? The, the way the system works is... Non-responsive. Objection non-responsive. Sustained. Are you aware, Ranger, statutorily, the Attorney General has the authority for he himself to hire outside counsel. The, I was told by- Yes or no? I, Are no, you aware? I, no, I do not know that's a fact, no. Okay, you don't know one way or the other. It's not my bailiwick. Yes, sir. All right, now, when we talked earlier, Ranger, about uh, some potential mistakes that you may have made when you met with the House committee about your recollections. And, and to be fair uh, to you, Ranger, this was a meeting this year in February, right? Yes, yes it was. Uh, and what had happened happened back at least two years ago, maybe yes. two and a half, right? Yes. So I'm, I'm not carping at your memory. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page now as to what's accurate and what's not. Okay. Okay. Um, do you remember telling the, the, I think we've already discussed sort of globally, at one point you told the House committee that Drew Wicker delivered documents in a back alley in the dark of night, right? I did say that. And I'm the last person, Ranger, to strike out at another about hyperbole, but that's what that was. That was just an exaggeration on your part, right? No, it was exactly what I had been told by numerous other people. I had no direct knowledge. All right. So who was it, Ranger, that, sorry. I'm sorry, who was it, Ranger, that told you that Drew Ricker delivered these document, documents in the dark of the night in a back alley somewhere. Who told you that? You said you were told that by numerous people, so give me two. Counselor, I would, in being very honest with you, there's probably five or six people who told me that in passing, and I, don't, I couldn't tell you who it was. It's three years ago. Okay, well, if it's five or six people that told you that, can you give me one of them? I, 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 if I testify today, who it was that gave my information, I would not be able to say honestly that that person did. Okay. Well, uh, you certainly told the House Committee that, right? I absolutely did. And when was it, Ranger, that you decided that that uh, statement to the House Committee was incorrect? I didn't know whether it was correct or incorrect. I passed it on to the House. Let, let me That's back, their job. Let, let me back up, Ranger. Yeah. I thought two hours ago or whenever it was, when you and I started this dance, sometimes friendly, sometimes not so friendly, I asked you if there was anything in reviewing your statements to the House managers that you believed was inaccurate, and you pointed out this very statement that is the Drew Wicker dark of night back alley statement. And you had indicated that you had, I think come to that conclusion after meeting with either Mr. DeGarren or Mr. Harden. Is that right? Yes, it was one of my attorneys asked me, did I make that statement on that date? And I said, yes. I was passing on information that I received from someone else. Okay, but I had no direct knowledge. Right. So are you relying upon Mr. DeGarren or Mr. Uh, Harden now for the truth or falsity of something? I'm not sure I understood your question. Okay. Well, you told the House back in February that Drew Wicker 
dark and night back alley. Now you're saying that's a mistake. When did you determine it was a mistake? I don't know whether it's a mistake or not. I'm passed on the information. I was asked by our attorneys, did I say that? And I said, yes. And I explained to them that I passed it on to them to investigate it. Okay. So I don't, I don't know what Drew uh, testimony would be or would not be. I don't know the truth. So you don't know if what you were saying to the house managers is true or not? What I was saying to the house managers was that somebody needed to talk to Drew Wicker. That was my only purpose in bringing it up. Well, but when you tell the house managers your statement, you would agree with me, Ranger, you don't say, I heard from five or six people that his travel aide who was with him at all times outside the office went with him to have meetings and also in one instance carried documents and gave them to Nate Paul in a dark alley one night in the middle of the night. You don't say you heard that from five or six people. You say that as a fact, right? In my mind, I said it for them to be a lead to go talk to Drew Wicker. Okay. I didn't say it as a fact because I have no personal knowledge. You're saying you didn't suggest you had personal knowledge of that? I do not have any personal knowledge about what Drew Wicker would or would not testify to. I was relaying what I was told by others so the committee could find Drew Wicker and find out what the truth is. It's part of an investigation. So how do we know, Ranger, when we look at your statements that have been made to the investigating committee how do we know that those are statements based on your own personal knowledge or based on something that you've heard? I will certainly tell you if you ask me. But well, you didn't tell them. You didn't say I heard this from five or six people. You said it emphatically, first person, in fact. So how can we tell when it's you you're relying upon in your memory or unnamed people? How do we know? Objection. Objection to Mr. Cogdale. Cogdale, sorry. <laughs> Objection to Mr. Cogdale Have stating I nothing, Dick. Nothing? Uh, well, we've known each other for at least 30 years. But my objection is to Mr. Cogdale making a statement of what the record says right, and then uh, asking him a different question about it. It's a statement by counsel rather than proper cross examination. Look on page 18, Mr. Maxwell, of your. I'll sustain the objection. You can rephrase it. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I'm sorry I call you judge. It's just reflex, Your Honor. You can call me anything. It's, it's fine. I'm, I'm just Let's don't get carried the, away. I just have this job. Uh, if you will look, Ranger, on page 18, uh, I believe line three, okay. would you read out loud what you tell the house managers on page 18, line three. Yes, yeah, his travel aide, who was with him all the time outside the office, went with him to, and there's a hyphen, would have meetings with him, and also in one instance carried some documents and gave them to Nate Paul in a dark alley one night in the middle of the night. So you would agree with me, and to satisfy Mr. What's, what's the name? Touche. <laughs> to both satisfy, of, both to of you need your names in the hat right there. Yeah, okay. to, to satisfy Mr. Touche, we, you would agree that you didn't qualify this statement, Ranger, that it was told to you by five or six people, right? What are you asking me to agree to? You would agree to me that when you told the House committee this story about Drew Wicker, you never said you had heard it from someone else. I did not. Okay. So my question remains the same. Since you didn't qualify or explain your answers that were based on hearing it from someone else, how do we know, Ranger, when you're telling us something that you know from um, your own personal knowledge, 
as opposed to hearing it from someone else. There is no comparison between giving an investigative committee a lead to go and investigate. I never said that I had any personal knowledge of that. Okay. Let's, try, let's try again. What's the answer to my question, Ranger? Which is? The third time. Since you don't qualify your explanations and explain to us whether they are based on first person knowledge or you heard it from somebody else, how do we know what you are basing your explanations on? My explanations Action. of Action. what? Now, what are you referring to when you say, what did I base my explanations on? My objection was asked and answered. Actually, he hasn't answered. Overruled. Now, so that you and I are clear, Ranger. Okay. You are a fellow that's taught folks how to testify, right? I'm um, say that. Here, say it again. <laughs> Why is it that every time I ask you if you've taught folks to testify, you suddenly can't hear the question? Actually, my testifying, I learned by experience. Okay. And is that one of the things you've learned by experience, Ranger, to pause and act like you haven't heard the question? Maybe. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, what did you learn? I learned that it throws you off. Does it? Does it? Okay. And that's your intent, Ranger? Rather than testifying to the truth and giving direct answers, your game is to throw people off? Is that where we're going, Ranger? Is that where we're going? No. That's what you just said. That's what you just suggested. I just said that I do sometimes pause. Ranger, you also told the House Committee that Ken Paxton met with the Travis County DA and requested that the Travis County DA's office refer the case to him. You remember telling him that? And referred the case to who? To, the, to him, Ken Paxton. Yes. Okay. Who told you that? Don Clemmer. Okay. That's really interesting. Because are you aware, Ranger, that it was Don Clemmer who told Mindy Monfort and Miss Moore, hey, I don't want to deal with this. Let's give it back to the AG's office. It was him that came up with the idea. Are you aware of that? I know that Don Clemmer, when I made the phone call, called to him, and I was chewing him out about sending that over to me, that he told me it's not Objection. his fault that Ken Paxton requested it be sent to Objection me. non-responsive. Excuse me, Your Honor, but he... Uh, no, he's not answering the question, Mr. Touche. He's my not. objection. My objection is that Mr. Cogdale cut off his answer when the answer was responsive to what Don Clemmer told him. No, that wasn't the question. The question was... Overruled and rephrase the question. Yes. Make it clear. Yes, sir. The question is, Mr. Maxwell... Are you aware that it was actually Don Clemmer's idea to refer the case to the Attorney General's office? Not Ken Paxton's. He wasn't even aware that he could, that process could occur. It was Clemmer's idea, not Paxton's. Are you aware of that? Objection to the form of the question, inserting what Ken Paxton knew. Sustained. Are you aware that the idea to refer the case to the, to the AG's office came not 
from Ken Paxton, but from Don Klemmer. Are you aware of that, yes or no, Ranger? Objection, that's a fact, not in evidence. I'm trying to get it in evidence. But, but it's the lawyer testifying. I'm... <laughs> Overruled. Fifth time, Ranger. Are you aware that it was the idea of Don Klemmer to refer this matter to the AG's office? Are you aware of that, yes or no? No, that's Thank not you. what he told me. Okay. You've told the House Committee, Ranger, that actually it was your lawyer, Mr. Turner. Is he here today? Did you say Mr. that? Mr. Turner? Yes, sir. Yes. Where is he? He's in uh, somewhere. I think he's in the chambers. Okay. Um, but he was with you while you were being interviewed by the House managers, right? Back in February. That's correct. Um, so you were present when your lawyer told the House committee that Paxton drafted the contract to Kamek and Paxton took Kamek over to the DA's office? Yes, I was there when okay. he said that. Yes, sir. So look, look at page 49, Ranger, of your um, board of managers interview. If you'll look, Ranger, at, I think, line three down, your lawyer says what David's talking about is after David and Mark refused to approve hiring of outside counsel, Attorney General Paxton actually drafted and sent the contract to this guy, Kamek. That's what your lawyer tells the board of managers, right? Yes. Where did he get that from? I don't know. Did you hear that from somebody? Sure. Who'd, who'd you hear that from? Say it again. Who's what? Really? No, I'm not. I'm being serious. <laughs> We're going to be here all day. <laughs> who did you... Who did you hear that from, Ranger? Who did you hear that... Paxton drafted and sent the contract from? I don't know who has that information. I wasn't involved with Kamek. Uh, objection, non-responsive. Okay. Sustained. Ranger, I'm asking you who told you that Ken Paxton drafted and sent the contract to Brandon Kamek. What is the name of the human that told you that? I don't know that. I, I'm not asking you if you know that. I'm asking you who told you that. Those are two different things. I think the statement was made by my attorney. And you said, after I pointed out, Ranger, that your attorney made that statement, you were the one that said, I had heard that, and I am asking you who told you that. I would think it was Mark Penley. Mark Penley, okay. Because Mark Penley was involved with that. Okay, and your lawyer, Mr. Turner, Ranger, goes on to say, and then, referring to Paxton, and then took him over to the DA's office and introduced, them, introduced him to them, where he went to the grand jury in the auspices of being his special prosecutor for the attorney general's office and obtained somewhere around 40 subpoenas. So your lawyer is telling the committee that Ken Paxton took Brandon Kamek to the Travis County DA's office, to the grand jury, introduced uh, Kamek to the Travis County DA's office grand jury, or the Travis County uh, uh, grand jury, and Ken Paxton 
got Kamek to get the 40 subpoenas. That's what your lawyer told Objection. You. The objection is he's trying to cross-examine the witness from another person's statement, the lawyer. He's only recited what the lawyer said, not what the witness said in that statement. I didn't think there was any confusion about that. You are sitting right there when your lawyer is telling the DA's office. Sustain, try a different approach. You, you are sitting right there when your lawyer is telling the committee that Ken Paxton took Brandon Kamick over to the Travis County DA's office, right? Right. Was that your understanding of what happened? That Ken Paxton took Brandon Kamick to the DA's office? I, like I said, I have no direct knowledge of it. Uh, I talked to Mark Penley a lot. It, he may have told me that. Okay. And your lawyer goes one step further and says that Paxton introduced Kamek to the grand jury. Is that your understanding of what happened? Objection. I don't know. I don't know if that happened or not. Okay. Yeah, objection to cross-examining from what the lawyer said, not what Mr. Webster uh, Mr. I am Mr. certainly Baxter free said. to test this witness's memory about what happened and what didn't happen. And if this lawyer is making falsehoods while he's sitting there, I can, I can cross-examine him about that all day long. Sustained. Did you tell your lawyer? Or where did your lawyer learn from this? Where did your lawyer learn this claim that Paxton took Mr. Kamek to the grand jury? Objection. This Law School 101 says you can't ask a client what he told his lawyer. I'm not Object asking him. Law School 101 would also teach you to listen to the question. Where did your lawyer learn that Paxton took Kamek to the grand jury? I have an objection pending as to inquiring about conversations between Mr. Maxwell and his lawyer. They're not privileged. They're in front of the House Committee. Can both of you come to the bench? Can you both come back? Mr. DeGarren. Oh, no, Mr. Cogdale.
George, if you'll take your seats again, please. Okay. Hopefully we've worked this out. I think so. Let me try it this way, Ranger. You with me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Do you know how your lawyer knew or supposedly knew that it was Paxton that ostensibly took Brandon Kamick to the DA's office? Do you know how your I lawyer? I do not. Do you know how your lawyer uh, learned that Paxton took him to the Travis County grand jury? No, I don't know how he knows that. Do you know how your lawyer learned that um, Paxton was with Kamek when he obtained these um, grand jury subpoenas? No. Well, when those statements were being made, Ranger, did you, David Maxwell, stand up and say, whoa, 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 Where, where'd you learn that from? Where, where'd that come from? What are you basing that on? Did you say anything to suggest to the committee that um, those statements weren't accurate? I don't know if they're accurate or not. But you don't know if they are or they aren't, apparently. You're right. I don't. I don't have any knowledge of it. Okay. So, that I'm clear, are you suggesting to this jury, to these 31 senators, that it's perfectly permissible for you if your lawyer makes a statement to the House committee and you have no personal knowledge, whether it's true or not, you're fine with that? I am fine with somebody making a statement that they know something about. It doesn't mean, because I don't know, doesn't mean it's not true. Okay, well, do you think, Ranger, that Ken Paxton took Brandon Kamek to the DA's office? I don't know the answer to that. Do you think, Ranger, that Ken Paxton took uh, Brandon Kamek before a grand jury? I don't have any direct knowledge. Okay. Do you think, Ranger, that Ken Paxton uh, was with Brandon Kamek uh, and helped him get those subpoenas. Do you, do you think any of those things are true? I don't know the answer to it. Okay. So, when you left the interview with the board of managers, did after that point in time, did you learn that any of the information that you had been provided or that your lawyer had provided was incorrect? Did you ever find out anything that was said was untrue or inaccurate? No. Okay. And of course, had you, you would have brought that to their attention. I would. Okay. May I have just a minute, Your Honor? I'm sorry, say that again? It's, it's, it's catching now, everybody's it's got catching. it. Can I have just a second? Yes, yes. The acoustics in here are not the best. Ranger, um, you never had any intention of investigating any of this, did you? When I read the allegations, I never had any intentions to open up an investigation. That's correct. You never had any intentions of finding out whether or not Mr. Uh, what well, Mr. Kamick and Mr. Wynn were telling you, you never had any intentions of doing any investigation, right? I 
plainly stated I was not going to do an investigation. Okay. You didn't so much as make a phone call, right? You didn't make a phone call to investigate. You didn't get on PACER. You didn't do TCIC. You didn't do NCI. All that litany of accessible tools that you had at your disposal, you didn't do anything, right? I did not run him through any of our, our databases. And you never had any intention of conducting an objective, fair, reasonable, thorough investigation, did you? There was no investigation to be Objection, done. Objection, non-responsive. Sustain. Do you remember, Ranger, when we lit, went through the litany of characteristics of a good investigator in the beginning of your direct examination? Yes. They should have an open and an objective mind, right? Yes. They should act without bias or predisposition. Yes. They sh uh, should be willing to follow the evidence. Yes. Um, to conduct an investigation timely, right? Should conduct an investigation timely. Yes and that they would know that no person is more or less deserving of their best efforts than another person, right? Yes. The investigation should be thorough, right? It should be, absolutely. And they should keep, generate and keep accurate records and reports, right? I didn't quite catch that last part. Now I couldn't hear you, that's a first. I'm sorry. It's all right. I didn't quite catch the last part of the question. Yes, that if someone's going to do a legitimate investigation, they should keep accurate records and reports. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. And you never had any intention of doing any of that, right? There was no investigation. That's a no? You never had any intention of doing any of that? Right. Okay. That's all I've had, Ranger. Thank okay. you. Redirect. How much you got? You want me to get this out of the way? My name is Todd Gale, by the way. Out of the way. How much time do you get? Knock yourself out. Mr. DeGaran. Once you were told that Nate Paul uh, was the person that General Paxton wanted you to meet with, did you find out who Nate Paul was? I did. And once you found out who... Uh, this is ask and answer, on direct, same, same question. Sustained. Did that... When you found out what he was and who he was, did that make the, the back, all that other stuff that Mr. Cogdale talked about unnecessary? Leading and ask and answer. Whether or not did it make it unnecessary? Ask and answer on direct. Sustained. All right. Mr. Cogdell asked you several questions about your conversation with Don Clemmer, the man in the Travis County District Attorney's Office. Um, so what did he tell you about this? Objection, hearsay. He opened the door, Your Honor. No, I didn't suspend the rules of evidence. Objection. Starting hearsay. on page 78, line 15, uh, there were a number of questions asked about the conversation with Mr. Clemmer, even to the point of what uh, uh, Mr. Maxwell said to Clemmer, I believe the door has been opened. That, I believe it's admissible, and I'm asking that the court allow it. Open the door is not a hearsay exception. Uh, overruled. Go ahead. 
Yes, Don Clemmer told me that Ken Paxton requested the investigation be sent to me. And what did he tell you about uh, his opinions about the review? Objection, hearsay. I didn't ask about that, even though I contend you can't. Sustained. <clears throat> In the presentation, this uh, PowerPoint presentation, was there a part of it that listed six people to make targets of an investigation Mr. Paul wanted you to conduct? Yes. What, what was your opinion about whether that was proper? If we followed the PowerPoint he created and conducted that investigation, we would have committed several federal crimes. What are they? What are the crimes that you... Obstruction of justice interfering with a federal investigation. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Recross. Yes. Let me get this straight, Ranger. So if the feds break into my house, break the door down, hold my wife at gunpoint, kick my dog, uh, cut off my internet, search my house without a warrant, and I want that crime to be investigated? You're telling this jury with a straight face that that's obstructing justice and interfering with a federal investigation? That's your position? Ranger, you're smarter than that. They did have a search warrant, and they did execute it, and it was lawful. You don't know if the search warrant is law was lawfully issued or not. You don't have a clue, do you? Mr. Nate Object Paul doesn't have any Objection. evidence that it wasn't lawful. Witness, please. Arguing Ranger. with the witness. Objection. Sustain. Have you ever analyzed the search warrant affidavit to see if it establishes probable cause for each of the search warrants that were issued? Mr. Paul did not provide Objection, with the document. Objection, non-responsive. Sustained. Ranger, you're smart enough to know what question I'm asking and whether or not to answer it. We Objection to the sidebar remark. Ranger, are you smart enough? Sustained. Hold on, there's an objection. Pending. Slow down, gentlemen. Slow down. Uh, yeah. Sustain uh, your objection. Go forward. Yes, sir. Ranger. Are you smart enough to understand my question? And are you smart enough to answer my question? We analyzed the material he gave us. Non That's all I have. Sustain. I think we're done here, Ranger. Good luck, sir. Witness may step down. Can the witness be excused? Both parties? Both parties, witness excused? Yes.